Hello everyone, my name is Norin, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, uh, just know that this is something that I do sometimes on my channel, it's called Thoughts and Opinions. I don't do it often because <laughs> I'm busy doing other things, but when I do get the chance, uh, usually I use Thoughts and Opinions to talk about TV shows or maybe movies. So that could be like uh, me speaking about something or me reacting to something. This is Thoughts and and opinions on Andy Mac. I already made a video on Andy Mac, but that was super long and not well done. And it's almost been a year since I uploaded that, but I do not. I encourage you, please do not watch the video unless you want to cringe because I bet you no one has ever seen the full video throughout. Hopefully you guys like this video because I actually have a script and everything. So I won't like, hopefully will not stutter and um, <laughs> say things I don't need to say also hopefully i look better in this video uh, than my last video so andy mack is a 2017 disney channel comedy drama it has your usual ensemble cast of stars in a normal kids show it stars uh Peyton elizabeth lee as andy mack joshua rush as cyrus goodman sophia wiley as buffy driscoll asher angel as jonah beck trent garrett as bowie quinn and leilon bowden as Bex Mack and Lauren Tom as Celia Mack. The series was created by Terry Minsky, our queen, who created another critically acclaimed television show, children's TV show, Lizzie McGuire. I'm sure you guys have all heard of this show. It's where Hilary Duff got her fame from. It ran from 2001 to 2004. While accepting the award for Television with a Conscience at the 2018 Television Academy Honors, Terry said, I consider Andy Mack to be one of my greatest achievements. The show itself is critically acclaimed and for good reason too. First, what does Andy Mack try to achieve? In a modern TV world bombarded with inclusivity, things start to get a bit repetitive. Competitive. Why is the show unique? Why does it get so much praise? The show's pilot, 13, starts with Andy celebrating her 13th birthday. This means that she's in 7th grade, middle school. She's hanging out with her best friends, Buffy and Cyrus, who she has known since 2nd grade. Her sister, Bex, comes home unexpectedly, and their mom, Celia, isn't too happy to hear that Bex is officially moving back home. Andy helps Bex settle in, and Bex teases Andy about her crush on a boy named Jonah, who's in 8th grade. Bex arranges for Andy to take frisbee lessons at a park with Jonah. Andy thinks she's doing horrible, but Jonah makes sure she's fine. Uh, he actually takes a liking to Andy pretty quickly. Andy is happy until his girlfriend, Amber, who's in ninth grade, shows up. Andy leaves the park feeling embarrassed. Bex feels like she's already ruined things, so she starts to pack up. Andy feels bad and tells her not to go. Bex reaffirms that this decision is for the best because she's screwed up before. Andy does not get what she's hinting at. Bex then proceeds to drop the bombshell that she's not not Andy's sister like at all. She reveals that she's Andy's mother. Uh, this means that Bex had a teenage pregnancy when she had Andy. The show immediately became groundbreaking for even showing that on Disney Channel. Andy even says the line near the end of the episode, stop, it's too weird, you're my mother who abandoned me. I would say personally that it's one of the best pilots of a Disney Channel show. Despite its TVG rating, Andy Mac actually achieves a lot more than most other shows on Disney or Nickelodeon within its first three seasons or 50 episodes. Andy Mac's achievements makes this show on the higher list for Disney TV shows. It's actually one of the highest rated Disney Channel TV shows on IMDb with a rating of 7.3 out of 10. Andy Mac's pilot was available on Watch Disney, which is also now known as Disney Now, on March 10th, 2017. The pilot aired on April 7th, 2017. Since then, the show has achieved a lot more groundbreaking moments. The show has also grown a small, tight-knit, but very active community on Twitter and Tumblr, which I am proud to say that I was a part of. On October 27, 2017, during the hour-long season 2 premiere, Hey, Who Wants Pizza?, Cyrus Goodman was the first official gay character on a Disney Channel show that aired internationally, but that's if you don't count Josh from The Lodge, uh, which is a British Disney Channel TV show, if you didn't know what that was. Cyrus told Buffy that he doesn't like Andy, but has a crush on Jonah. Buffy was supportive of his coming out to her. On February 23rd, 2018, during the hour-long episode Cyrus Bash Mitzvah, Cyrus tells Andy that she isn't the only person who likes Jonah during his bar mitzvah. Andy supports Cyrus and does not get upset. On February 8th, 2019, during the episode One in a Minion, Cyrus tells Jonah that he is gay during his Bubby Rose's shiva. He said, okay, that's your classic bagel and locks. That's 
Aunt Ruthie's cool. That's Gefilte's fish. Get that. And I'm gay. Cyrus Goodman effectively became the first person on Disney Channel and on any other piece of Disney media to use the word gay in terms of sexuality. The episode was interesting because it showed Cyrus and Jonah's strong friendship, especially when Cyrus was there for Jonah during his panic attack and when Jonah was supportive of Cyrus coming out to him. On July 26, 2019, during the series finale, We Were Here, Cyrus and TJ admit their feelings towards each other and became Disney Channel's first teen gay couple. Uh, Cyrus' gay storyline is only one in a handful of the many wonderful storylines in the entire show. The episodes Chinese New Year and Howling at the Moon Festival showcase Andy's Chinese heritage and have the characters wear red and predate ancestors and cook traditional Chinese food, along with releasing lanterns and casual family drama. Additionally, Andy gets stereotyped by her classmates just because she was Asian. Cyrus actually talks a lot about how he is a child of a divorce and has four shrink slash mental health professionals as parents throughout seasons one and two. He references his Jewish background a lot too throughout the entire show. Season two showcases the planning of his bar mitzvah. Cyrus practices his Hebrew and chooses out his suits with Jonah before the bar mitzvah. We actually get an hour-long episode that takes place at a synagogue in an accurate bar mitzvah. Mama, miniature golf, we were never, Cyrus bash mitzvah, and one in a minyan all reference his religion. Even though Jonah seems very happy-go-lucky and is technically considered the most popular guy in middle school, he is very insecure and oblivious. Before meeting Andy and her best friends, he actually had no real close friends. He was dating Amber and even she didn't care that much about him. In the season 2 episode, Head Over Heels, he falls down in the virtual reality arcade and Andy laughs at him before apologizing. This episode shows a vulnerable side of Jonah one where he is too embarrassed to admit he's upset. Before Cyrus Bash so many people in the fan base viewed Jonah as static, bland, generic, and that he did nothing to move the story along except be the cute boy that Andy likes. During Cyrus Bar Mitzvah, Jonah experiences a severe panic attack after Andy tells him that they're Know, broken up that they're done. Audience and TV critics congratulated the show at portraying an accurate panic attack. Immediately after his panic attack, Jonah tells Cyrus's dad not to say anything to his friends. Cyrus's dad tells Jonah that his friends won't think of him differently, but Jonah says they will because he thinks of himself differently. This episode shows that Jonah wasn't as one-sided as everyone thought and that he is very prone in self-judgment. Jonah's panic attacks aren't a one-and-done thing either. In the episode Cyrus Bash Mitzvah Perfect Day 2.0, Crime Scene Andy Shack, Howling at the Moon Festival, and One in a Mignon, Jonah experiences a panic attack or just plain panic. The continuity makes his character seem more real and grounded. Money problems are not a new issue. They've always existed. But it absolutely sucks when we see children handle the issues when it's not their problem. In Season 1, Amber is your stereotypical older mean girl. But there is more to her under the surface. In the season 2 premiere, we see Amber start working at the Spoon, a diner-like restaurant where the kids usually hang out. We find out in Friends Like These and The Snorpion that Amber is suffering through money problems and family issues. Her dad is fighting with her mom again and her dad lost his job so she starts selling stuff from her wardrobe and working at the Spoon to make money. So then we feel sorry for Amber and she doesn't become the stereotypical mean girl in our eyes. And better to have loved than to have lost, she confides in Bex that she doesn't really have any true friends. That scene gave us insight towards the way that Amber might be feeling and why she acts rudely to people sometimes. Amber is a character who goes from mean to nice gradually, and they acknowledge this at the end of Season 2 and throughout Season 3. She becomes friends with Andy, Buffy, Cyrus, and Jonah, effectively eliminating the bitter ex-girlfriend stereotype. Another person who has started to suffer through money problems is actually Jonah himself. At the beginning of season 3, during Howling at the Moon Festival, Andy and her family and friends release lanterns into the sky with wishes glued onto them. A wish falls from the sky and lands in front of Andy. Andy sees something she wasn't supposed to see and keeps it a secret to the X Factor. Andy, Buffy, Cyrus, and Jonah are at the spoon to eat breakfast when Jonah starts acting weird. Andy and her friends order, but Jonah doesn't. Buffy asks Jonah if he isn't hungry, why is he with them in the first place? Jonah plays it off as just wanting to spend time with them. Amber sees this and offers Jonah a free plate of food. He thanks her and this confirms that Jonah and Amber have confided in each other that they have money problems. Andy reveals what the note from the lantern said to Buffy and Cyrus. It was Jonah's wish that his family could be happy again. Andy and her friends question Jonah the next day about it 
and Jonah reveals that a few months before, his father made a bad investment and they ended up having to declare bankruptcy. Jonah tells them that they're staying with relatives, but that he's fine. Later on in Something to Talk About, Jonah reveals to Amber that his dad found an apartment that his family could live in and Buffy and Cyrus help him pack up his stuff. These issues just keep adding up for these kids. <laughs> Buffy is one of Andy's best friends. She is strong physically and emotionally. But in the season one episode, It's Not About You, Buffy is subject to issues that black girls with afro hair and curly hair regularly face. A kid in her class lies about not being able to see the board due to how big her hair is. Nevertheless, Buffy gets sent down to the principal's office and the next day she comes to school with straight hair. It turns out later in the episode that Buffy actually had a hard time adjusting because she burned off some of her hair due to it being the first time she's used a hair straightener. At the end, the kids get in trouble and she gets to go back to school for regular hair. People say that the writers of this episode had good intentions, but the fact that they never mentioned Buffy's race after this episode raised some eyebrows. Reiterating what I said at the beginning of the last paragraph, Buffy is physically and emotionally strong, but that's for a good reason. Buffy talks throughout seasons one and two about how she never gets to see her mom because she's in the military deployed somewhere overseas. In the season two episode, A Good Hair Day, Jonah asks Buffy why she's so competitive. Buffy tells him that her mom always tells her to be strong when she's away, so she is. In every sense of the word, she tries to be strong. Buffy is competitive and very athletic, which means she plays a lot of sports. In season one, Buffy is on the track team. In season two, Buffy becomes the first girl on the middle school boys basketball team because there's not a girls basketball team. And we were never, Buffy is surprised in the middle of a basketball game. Just as she's about to make the shot, her mom walks in the gymnasium to surprise her. That scene is regarded as one of the best scenes of the series. Anyway, at the end of season two, Buffy reveals that she got permission from the school to start a girls basketball team. In season three, she spends her time training and they actually play a game in the quack. Uh, later on in Something to Talk About, meanwhile Buffy uh, has a stress fracture. She can't play, so she learns that she's actually better at playing, but better at commanding her team by being a coach, and they actually win their first game with her team. TJ is a character who was introduced in the Season 2 episode Friends Like These. He's the sexist, mean team captain of the middle school's basketball team. He immediately dislikes Buffy and she dislikes him. He's only been seen with Buffy until there's a Mac in the shack, where we see him interact with Cyrus. He helps Cyrus get a chocolate chocolate chip muffin from the school's cafeteria. Cyrus is the first person we actually see him being nice to. TJ is still a jerk to Buffy though. It turns out that TJ has a lot of trouble with math, so Buffy gets tasked with tutoring him. Buffy tries to genuinely help him to the best of her abilities, but she starts to think he has a learning disability. He lashes out at her and calls himself stupid. He goes to the swings at the park to calm down, where he finds Cyrus calming himself down after a small panic attack. We get to see a new side of him we, the audience, have never seen before. Why is he so nice to Cyrus? Throughout season 2, TJ and Cyrus have their moments until the season 2 finale, the cake that takes the cake. TJ does a look back to Cyrus. The look back is a thing that the show has established that means if someone turns to look back at you, that means they like you. That was intriguing in itself that Annie Mac might have the first same-sex relationship. Throughout season 3, we see TJ and Cyrus navigate through the ups and downs of their friendship in One in a Minion after Cyrus finishes telling Andy and Buffy that he'll never reveal his former crush on Jonah, TJ walks in with romantic guitar music in the background. TJ also experiences a bit of homophobia in the most recent episode, Mount Rush More or Less. Kira, who's a girl who plays basketball, tries to convince TJ to do a costume of her on the middle school's costume day. After he repeatedly denies her, she says, So you'd rather do a costume with Cyrus than with me. Okay, have fun with that. She leaves TJ with a dumbfounded and confused look on his face. The actors for Cyrus and TJ, Joshua Rush and Luke Mullen, respectively, have hinted at both of them getting together at the series finale. In the end, TJ and Cyrus do in fact get together after two seasons of knowing each other. Okay, I've skipped out on a few people like the adults in the show, which I know aren't that popular with some of the people who watch it. Bex and Celia have not always had the greatest relationship, especially at the start of the show, but throughout the course of three seasons, Bex and Celia are a mother-daughter duo who get along with each other and no longer despise each other after settling their differences in season two. Bowie, Andy's father, and Bex's love interest, 
is shown to not be dependable at the beginning of the show, but he makes it clear he wants to stay for Andy because he didn't know she existed for the first 13 years of her life. Him and Bex later fall back in love, and after a season of waiting, they propose to each other in the season 3 premiere, The Boys Are Back. In the second to last episode, Bowie and Bex finally get married. Bowie becomes less of a laid-back guy and more of a dad. Bex becomes less of a teenaged millennial and more of a mom. Celia becomes less strict and more fun and loose. The characters in Andy Mac are very dynamic and have gone through a lot. Even though the show is supposed to be TBG, it contains a surprisingly amount of heartfelt moments and drama. Many people express that it looks like something that should be on ABC or Freeform, but not Disney Channel. To conclude the achievements of the show, here's a quick wrap up or summary. So, people of color main characters, uh, Andy, Buffy, Cyrus, Bex, Celia, uh, the LGBT representation in the show, Cyrus is gay, he has three coming out scenes, TJ is also gay, cultural, religious uh, representation, Andy's Chinese heritage, uh, Cyrus is Jewish, uh, money issues, Job losses and bankruptcy that uh, Jonah and Amber go through. Uh, unique characters. Andy is very artsy and craftsy. Buffy is strong. Cyrus is awkward and can't do physical education. Jonah is happy and oblivious. Amber is someone who suffered through a lot. TJ has dyscalculia. Uh, Libby is a character I haven't mentioned. She's deaf. Realistic events as well. Teenage pregnancy, panic attacks, crushes, military homecomings, bar mitzvahs and shibbles, parties, moving from your friends, saying goodbye. So, uh, On April 24th, 2019, Disney Channel announced that the show would be ending after season 3 and would not be getting a season 4 like many of us hoped. In other words, the show was cancelled. Many people felt it was reminiscent of the cancellation of Girl Meets World two years before in 2017. Some felt it was ironic that Animac was basically a better Girls Meets World and it was still cancelled. The final seven episodes of season three started airing on Friday, June 21st, 2019, and the series finale was on Friday, July 26th, 2019. I encourage you to please give the show a watch if you have not. Most of the episodes are on Disney+, Plus, but they're actually still not. I don't know why that's a problem still. Animac will be remembered as a show that tried its best to be different, unique, and inclusive. A lot of people say it doesn't come off like a Disney Channel show, but some Something adults can enjoy too. A majority of the fan base for the show is actually older than the target audience of 6 through 14, if you can believe it. Will I see Annie Mac on a critically acclaimed roster of TV hits? I hope so. It deserves all the praise it gets. Alright, so anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please hit a like button. If you don't like this video, hit the dislike button. If you want to start a discussion, do it in the comments i'd love to see your opinions uh if you like my content please subscribe to my channel if you don't then don't, don't do it uh my name is norman and i'll see you guys another time adios